What's up, everybody? I'm David Hain. Welcome to episode 207 of the A to D from Addict to Disciple podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please like, subscribe, follow, and share the link with your friends, or click on the support link in this episode's description. Your donation of any amount could change a life. If you'd like to get our curriculum, you can get the paperback or ebook of From Ashes to Destiny on Amazon. When we come back, we'll get into this episode entitled, Good Judgment. Welcome back to episode 207 of the A to D from Attic to Disciple podcast entitled, Good Judgment. I want to give a big welcome to my friends in recovery from the U.S., South Africa, and Australia for their participation in this episode. As before, I'll be keeping them anonymous but I'll be saying their answers as if we're having a live group meeting. Guys, I want to start with a quote by Will Rogers, the American humorist, who said, Good judgment comes from experience, and a lot comes from bad judgment. You got that? Good judgment comes from experience, and a lot of that comes from bad judgment. So, can you guys give me an example of wisdom or good judgment? that you have learned the hard way through past bad judgment. Ben, you want to start us off today? Sure, David. First of all, I like to play on words with this one. Years ago, I was in a counseling situation with an individual struggling with addiction. The individual was of the opposite sex, and we were meeting privately. Although my intentions were entirely innocent, I discerned my wife was not exactly comfortable with the entire situation, so I rearranged the meeting dynamics to be in public, with another trusted individual to be included. It also morphed into her husband being involved in the meetings, because he played into the addiction she was dealing with, which brought more healing. Bottom line, it wasn't too long after we had finished our meetings, and she had achieved some type of plan for sobriety, that I heard of other individuals getting caught up in scandal situations that I very easily could have gotten caught up in, whether it was the lie or the truth. Nonetheless, I've learned that it's just wiser to make sure in those situations that I'm careful about who I meet, where I meet, and how I meet. You can always outlive a lie, but why set yourself up to be lied on or to be in a negative situation that could ruin your reputation? Good start, Ben, and thanks for the good judgment there, the wisdom that you're passing along that you learned along the way. Charlie, how about you? Well, David, in recovery, one thing I have learned about judgment is that it holds no place for anyone but God. Nearly each time in recovery when I find myself judging someone for something they have done or I don't like them doing, it's actually a character defect or a bad habit I don't like about myself. Just my ego not being me amigo. It's false pride. It's a lack of compassion. It's the opposite of humility. So through all the poor outcomes with my being judgmental, I was often left alone, sad, and drunk. A recovery saying that helps with this is when you point a finger at someone, there are three pointing back at you. In practicing mindfulness, I remember that saying, and then I meditate on the following Bible verse, if I could share it. Sure, go ahead, Charlie. Okay, guys, it's Matthew 7, 3, and it says, Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Good word, Charlie. And it really brings this idea of judgment, um, bad judgment on other people to fore, and that is, So often we ignore our own errors or negative character traits or whatever it might be while we're focused on pointing out that in other people. Eddie, what do you have to say about this one? Well, David, the other day you posted something that said in the lines of, look back and appreciate your mountains. So for me, bad judgment in the sense of taking part in temporary satisfaction, you know, it's it's not understanding the 
long-term effects on yourself, your family, and your finances. I personally almost lost everything but God. I am just so grateful that I came to my senses in time, that I had the courage to admit my weakness and get the help I needed. Now I can honestly look back at my mountains, and I'm in the position to change direction and make better and more productive decisions to show my family and people in addiction that with grace, anything is possible. Shaw, so true, Eddie. We need to be able to look back and appreciate our mountains because we're in that position where we now have the power and the support and the faith to change the direction we're headed. Dante, what do you think about this one? Well, David, in my line of work as a financial advisor, I have learned good judgment and how to gauge conversations with people on things that are sensitive topics to them. I have learned that because of the very poor judgment and actions I took in some of those difficult conversations earlier in my career, I learned instead of being a direct accuser to ask questions to get them to uncover the issue themselves. Being loving, kind, patient, and intentional can get a lot accomplished. Wow. Good stuff there, Dante. And let me repeat what I heard in there. Very often when we're trying to pass judgment on someone else, it puts us in that role of being a direct accuser. And when we're feeling that stirring inside, the good judgment is to sit back and let them uncover the issues themselves. And what we do as we sit back is be loving, kind, patient, and intentional as we hold our conversations with them. Thanks again, Dante. How about you, Harry? What do you think about this? Shaw, David, that was a hard one for me. As I used to have a lot of bad judgment with people when I was in early recovery. There were a lot of people who I thought were my friends and were happy for me in recovery. But I found out they were just using me for my money. When I was in addiction, I was very easily manipulated to give out money as I used to feel guilty a lot and thought money fixed everything. When I stopped giving people money, especially in my recovery, and started seeing people for who they really are, things changed. Those same people stopped contacting me, and that made me learn who my true friends are. Wow. Thanks for sharing that, Harry. And it's a perfect example of understanding our bad judgment and yours in this area of giving out money to sort of keep your friends and the good judgment and realizing when the money stopped coming their way, they weren't your friends. But now in the end, you've learned who your true friends are. Freddie, you ready to close this out on this topic today? Sure, David. And I guess I'll start by saying it took me 37 years of drinking and 10 years of Xanax to figure out my fate was doomed without recovery. And in those 37 years, it was my bad judgment that kept me in that prison of addiction. In recovery, they say that recovery comes when we see that addiction brings jails, institution, or death. I was a sliver away from death and jail. I made it to the nut hut and rehab. The good judgment bestowed on me came by the gift of desperation, I guess you could say. But in early recovery, I hated that line because I didn't view it as a gift, even though I knew my desperation. And then they hit me in recovery with another line, which was, I heard all these other guys in groups saying, I'm a grateful recovering addict. And I'm thinking, I'm just sort of hanging on by a thread here. And why do they say I'm a grateful recovering alcoholic? Well, it all let me see the good judgment, the good understanding that my physical, spiritual, and emotional health needed healing. Recovery brought me the wisdom that there's a way out of this addiction. AA and a spiritual connection is my new way of life. 
All the miracles in my life are possible for anyone in addiction. And the good judgment, the wisdom is learning how to share that truth with others. And guys, if I could close with a, a song that my faith has stirred this secular song to, to really be meaningful for me as I am encouraged to share with others. It's one by Van Morrison called Whenever God Shines His Light. And I'll just say a little bit of it. Whenever God shines his light on me, he opens up my eyes so I can see. And when I look up in the darkest night, I know everything will work all right. In deep confusion and deep despair, when I reach out for him, he will be there. When I am lonely as I can be, I know that God shine a light on me. Wow. Thanks so much, Freddie. A, a good ending. And guys, thank you all for your your input in this group. And I hope that something that each one of you said during this episode can shine a light on a listener who's in deep confusion and deep despair. Thanks for listening to this episode of the A to D from Addict to Disciple podcast. If you were saying that's me as you listened, then it's time now to reach out and join a group. You can message me in the link in this podcast or by email at davidfromatd at gmail.com or go to my website www.fromatd.org and click on the contact page. Maybe you have a question you want to ask one of the guys who are part of our group. Feel free to just send that message on to me and I'll make sure I get it to them. Tune in Monday for our next episode. And as always, stay safe and stay resilient.